Bears got the lowest rates in the country. Some of the lowest rates in the country. You know, we think that we know we should be able to play, man. It's it's unfair. You got Florida coming in there, 2,500 new cases a day. You know, you can't you can't do that to us. At this time, we have presented additional mitigating strategies and new things that uh, that the department is going to consider in that. Uh, when we get uh, the feedback from them, it will give CIAC, again, more information in terms of recommendations uh, for the decision that we have to make of whether or not we could move forward with football. We believe the numbers are low enough, the matrix tell us we can play football, so we're trying to find a way to make that happen. Where we are in Connecticut right now, we are seeing, as we've uh, been sharing for the last few weeks, um, a number of outbreaks around the state, and in addition to that, a real shift from older adults to adolescents and young adults who are getting COVID. Kids need to play this sport. They need to get involved in activities. Having COVID is an issue, but we can come up with a way to play this game safe as best as possible and let the kids still achieve their goal, which is to play football. Going into schools, going into colder weather, the onset of the uh, influenza season, continues to lead the Department of Public Health to say um, that high-risk activities uh, really should be avoided at this point in time. Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to the COVID-19 Meat Grinder special football episode of, uh, of our high school football podcast. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Bowley. With me, as always, is Peter Paguaga. Peter, how are you? Good. I'm, and, I'm, oh, I thought you were asking me a question. I'm sorry. No, no, and uh, also joining us is Hearst Connecticut Media Group and Game Time CT Sports columnist Jeff Jacobs is joining us. We can't really see him. His uh, software is on the fritz, but I assure you folks, he's here. You're going to hear his voice loud and clear. How are you, Jeff? I'm good, John. How you doing? Hi, Pete. Hi. I'm glad we're back doing the meat grinder. Um, it's unfortunate the situation that we're in, but I'm glad that we're back doing the meat grinder. Yeah, no, this is this is fun. Uh, we should have been in week one, basically, right? Week one already. Uh, we should have had a bunch of games, but as you know, it's been an, uh, just a horror show. I mean, as wow. as this whole year has been with COVID-19 and coronavirus, uh, you know, pushing on 200,000 dead and countrywide. Connecticut, we had lockdowns. We did a few podcasts on that. And uh, it looked like, as far as, like, Connecticut schools are starting to reopen now. You're seeing a few cases pop up here and there. Some schools are closing or pausing at least. But the big news for us, obviously, is the CIC had a plan to start the high school football season, uh, along with all the other that the CIC, Glenn Lungarini, has been, has been all over the place telling uh, everyone that uh, the CIC wants to play. Um, but the only one that, that was not given clearance by the uh, Connecticut Department of Health is of course football and that is the big debate we had the rally last wednesday at state capitol and uh it's just been uh well in so many words it's been a real horror show it, no matter which side you you fall on um i know football some people are probably listening and going football like is this this is your main concern well yeah uh, this is the big big passion project here and that's what we cover so uh um just uh i guess i want to just throw it out to you guys from where we started, we got locked down. We got a plan together, July 31st. That got upended by uh, well, well. First, they sent it to the board, uh, the, the the football committee. They said, "Let's push the spring." Then we went to the board of control. The board of control says, "Nope, we're going to play. Everything is going to be on." Then the next day, the Department of Health, uh, in a request for its recommendation, gave its recommendation, and the Department of Health uh, Acting Commissioner Deidre Gifford and gang has not budged one iota for it with the exception of allowing some volleyball to be played outdoors. And despite some wrangling and all sorts of crazes, that is where we are right now. Gentlemen, what can you say about <laughs> I'm exhausted. where we are? I'll be honest. I'm exhausted. And I'm sure coaches are, and I'm sure the players are. This has been a real uh, roller coaster for the past couple of months. I, I think I've spoken to you guys more in the last, 
seven weeks than maybe we had during uh, the lockdown and the end of winter and throughout the spring. Not that we didn't talk, but, you know, we would like BS and, and nonsense. But now it's like we're, you know, I always thought the beginning of football season and preparing for football season was crazy with all the amount of stuff that we did in terms of previews and getting out and going to scrimmages and stuff. I think I'm more tired now than I was a year ago preparing for the football season. And, you know, it's been a lot of running around, a lot of phone calls. I've been calling coaches every hour of the day. I know, Sean, you've been, Jeff, you've been as well. Jeff, you're calling, you know, everybody uh, all hours of the day, just trying to get answers, trying to get information. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just tired. <laughs> it's well, funny. I think I've gone – full circle from like July uh, when I didn't think really sports, most sports would be ready to play safely through the football committee originally, you know, recommending spring football, which I was good with and I was on board with to now where I'm demanding a press conference today, tomorrow, or sometime this week, where they come out and say, yeah, it is spring football. Because at one point, probably two, three weeks ago, I felt we'd gone so far down the line, had argued it so much that we should absolutely take it to its logical and re most realistic, most scientific conclusion of, say, September 21st, get the, the best data out there, examine everything around the country, and the, and the metrics here in – uh, a couple weeks after school started and make up, see if we can sneak this in for five, six weeks. And is that better projection wise than five, six weeks in the late winter, early spring. However, that was my argument as late as uh, Thursday night, Friday, given no indication that any of the CIAC uh, uh, mitigation proposals were really seriously, you know, potentially accepted, I say, let's end it and let's get the spring, get the work. Cause I think putting all the schedules together and all the different possibilities of what could happen is going to be a full-time job for a lot of people. Uh, so I say end this thing now and let's go for spring and football. Yeah. I never understood why spring was taken off the table. Um, I think that's one of the big questions that I have or have had had have had had um, is just, I don't understand. Like when the coaches committee comes out and says, Hey, we think it's the best thing for the sport to move to the spring. And then for it to be just taken off the table, I thought was a little interesting. Um, I don't think I ever understood why they decided to do that. And, you know, it's kind of funny watching the reactions on Twitter and talking to coaches you know, when it first came out that the coaches committee wanted to move the spring, there were some who were like, oh, we can't play in the spring. Why would we play in the spring? And then when spring's taken off the table and then football's paused, all of those people are like, well, spring's our only option. Let's do spring. And then it's, you know, you got to get, we want something. And they go, okay, well, we can't do 11 on 11. So we'll do 11, uh, seven on seven. And then it's like, oh, we can't do seven on seven. Seven and seven is not football. It's like, but you said you wanted something. Here's something, but it's not something that you want. So, Pete, I know what they want. 11-on-11 11 11 football right now. Yeah, and they well, want you out there with your camera saying, don't you think you should be the number one in the polls? That's what they want. Pete. Well, I mean, I'll be honest with you. When Sean was like, away, right? <laughs> could be at the end of week one. And I was thinking, I was like, you know what? I should be filling out my pickums. And Pete Paguaga went 10-0 and this week. And, you know, putting myself number one on the standings. Um, we should be there. I wish we could be there. I, I really wish we could be there. But this is not 2019. This isn't last year. Things have changed. Like, things around the world have changed. Yeah, and absolutely. Not everything is going to be the same. And it's unfortunate and it sucks. I don't think Pete... I don't think pe people grasp how different things have changed or switched on a dime. I think that's been a very... Everyone seems to be operating on this assumption that everything's going to be normal, and, and, and it's not, not normal. I mean, Connecticut has, you know, by most accounts, the lowest uh, COVID-19 numbers in the entire country. We're one of the best in the country. We've done what we need to do. But even then, we're not on an island. Heck, yeah, we, even, this is even over. 
right. Even Hawaii. I have friends out of Hawaii. Even Hawaii, they they live on an island and it's <laughs> ramp, ramping up there. Uh, but we don't live on an island. This this thing could could rear its ugly head um, anytime soon. Here's what I do know. I do know that our strategies here. Now you could quibble about the governor's plans and how he's shut things down and his emergency powers. You could quibble about all that. I know a lot of people have kind of carried that over to the football thing, saying that he's now operating as a dictator and a king and a tyrant. I heard, king, which you know, I just okay. Let's kind of dial it back here, everybody. We're not, you know, this is everyone's uh, hysterical. Yeah, everyone is hysterical, and we have some really, you know, extreme opinions uh, on uh, several uh, on the on the spectrum here that have really that just it's a little uh, disproportionate, as I said on Twitter. Let's calm down. Let's not get hysterical. We know this is important to you. We know this is is a big deal. But this is still, as I was saying at the top, this is still a pandemic. We have great numbers. We're doing a great job in the state. People are wearing masks here. We don't really see a lot of push back on that. I mean, you see some, but, you know, I think everyone understands what we need to do. I think now what we're looking at is I just, I just don't think people really grasp the situation that we're also going into uh, a, a winter season where there's going to be the actual flu. We have that. We're all going to be going back indoors very shortly. We're in a really interesting spot here. And I know the DPH in making its decision on football has said that the, the fact that we're going back to school, because that they, this is a public health thing. They, the fact we're going back to school, we don't know what that's looking like. We're just starting to get it now. And the fact we're going into colder weather where more people will be indoors. I mean, I've been out to, to, uh, to restaurants and everything has been great. You wear your mask, sit down uh, in that sense. So there's been some normalcy there, but we're going back to schools. We're gonna start going indoors again. We really don't know how this is going to phase in into the next winter season. So I don't think, we're not even out of the woods yet. So that's been a big, big issue that I've kind of agreed with the, the DPH about. Now, the other thing I, I'm, I'm curious to ask you guys about is you look at the rest of the country and we talked to uh, Utah's, uh, we, we have a bunch of other podcasts here. Uh, we did a bunch of interviews. We talked to uh, Utah's director of football, Brennan Jackson, who their state was one of the first states to open up uh, the football season. They played on August 13th. Utah has seen a bit of a climb, but overall, I know Utah's a different state, but overall, Utah seems to be doing okay. Other states have also opened up their football season. They seem to be doing okay. I'm watching if a Google document, or I get Google, Google updates on uh, stories around the country, and it's not perfect by any stretch. West Virginia had a bunch, what did I say the other night, Pete? Uh, I think West Virginia had like 20 or 28, 28 games shut history. down. They do it by a color code. If their county is red or orange, they shut everything down. No games. If it's red, they don't even have practices. It's an interesting system. Um, but some other states have been doing well. But just your thoughts on that? I mean, well, I think Sean, at the very core of it, is Connecticut's got terrific has had terrific numbers. And some people say we've got terrific numbers. We've done all the right things. Let's stay with that and err on the side of caution. Other people are saying. We have terrific numbers. Therefore, it is now time to start opening up more and more things to what we see as normal lifestyle. So everybody's got to come up with that that answer in their own brain and unfortunately in their own heart because I think we ought to use our brains. But then again, everybody says, my science is this way and, my, and the other guy says, my science says this. So it's always also a matter of whose science, unfortunately. Right. But, but you... The, in talking and listening to that pod, uh, the, the podcast you're going to uh, air with the guy from Utah, it's very clear it's a different world out there. You know what I mean? There's sort of a pioneer, uh, Latter Day Saints uh, base state uh, that is can do. Let's think about things positively about what we can do and not negatively what can go wrong and they go from there and it's interesting that BYU just uh, postponed or uh, I don't know if it's gonna be canceled postponed their game this coming Saturday at Army because they have uh, some COVID outbreak so the major universe major university in their state is called off an NCAA game because of problems so uh, and and the, the thing is is that these states are willing to say, like, look, we can have a a postponed game here or there. That's okay. Our kids aren't, because their age, aren't prone 
to being seriously ill. Then other people say, but you're going to bring it home and, and kill grandma, unfortunately, or grand, grandpa. So these arguments are not easily answered. And uh, we know how it's gone in U- what Utah thinks. And I think we know how a lot of people in Connecticut think if we step away from, you know, our sports football centric area that we're that we're part of uh but I, the one thing i wanted to bring back on was you're so right in the spring stuff uh pete i don't know what the hell they're doing uh the, uh, the cic i'm talking about there was no reason in my mind to drop it that it being on the table either they want to bluff the cia uh the dph into thinking that look at its football it's fall all or nothing or that they are not telling us and they really are working on blueprint or whatever quiet reason they want it to, uh, uh, to have. Uh, But to me, if they haven't been thinking about uh, spring football seriously all along, they're totally nuts. And I kind of don't believe that they're not thinking about it. Uh, I'm talking about the CIAC. Yeah, I would imagine that it's it's been a conversation. I just, I it just I don't know. It just it's kind of one of the things that was like you know. I, there's a lot of things that have happened that have been unexpected. I think we can all agree. You know, some news dropping on Sunday nights at ten thirty <laughs> was never uh, in any of our plans. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I thought that that was just it was easy. And look, I'll be honest with you. If we're being completely frank and honest, if you're the CIAC. Put spring on the table, even if you don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Put it on the Why table. Not? I don't understand. That, is, that has been the big cause of all this angst. They, Connecticut right now, as we stand, does not have a football season coming up, period. No football. Yeah, there's no right. football. You know, not, and that has been – listen, why wouldn't you even try? Like, see, that's been my thing. I thought, as Jake mentioned, I thought that there was an idea that we could see where we were – after two weeks, September 21st, like a week from now is where we kind of like looked and see. I don't think it's going to change anything, but that would have been maybe the bellwether to say, okay, maybe we can try and start a football season. And I think a lot of the kids and a lot of the coaches wanted to try that. If there were outbreaks, then they would shut it all down. All right. So obviously we know that the DPH and the state have, have taken a very, look, we've worked it out here. We've done a great job. Let's keep doing a good job. As Jake said, that is, they've taken a very hard line stance on this. And the doctor, uh, Dr. Sten uh, Vermood, the dean of Yale Public Health, we'll talk to him in a little bit. He uh, he said he said basically the same thing. Our numbers are great because we've done great. You look at some of these other states; they haven't done it. But the fact is, we don't know what spring's going to look like. Glenn Lungarini says, "Well, that's the reason why they can't. They they said no spring." My thought is, why would you even do that six months out? I don't or five months out. I don't even understand why would you even get give it a shot. The one thing that crossed my mind also was that is the CIC so afraid of opening up the spring door and starting the arguments from baseball, lacrosse, hey, don't you dare cut into my season or, or we don't want that to happen. We've already lost that. Maybe he doesn't want to have two – he doesn't want to have uh, wars on both fronts, which great generals will tell you not to have. But for crying out loud, it is sports. It's not World War II. Well, uh, right. yeah, anyway. we, we think that. There are some people who might disagree with <laughs> Right, right. And it's, that, it's that serious still. But, like, that's why uh, uh, that's why you got to get to work on it. And, and because uh, I'm not so sure there's going to – if there's – we really got to watch volleyball in one sense because if they, if they do not allow volleyball, uh, how are they going to have basketball uh, – and uh, some other sports, it, and it was funny. They're, Utah, there. When you ask the, the Mr. Jackson from Utah about wrestling, he goes, "Of course, we're going to have it." I that one. It was like his the way he was so sure that they were going to have wrestling. I'm going, "Wow, they, you know, that's so different than what we're thinking." And the other thing was, I want to point out too. Someone brought this up to me today. They shortened basketball, boys basketball. Why would they have to shorten girls basketball? The girls aren't going to play football. Yeah. Uh, it, this is the thing. I bring that up because the CIAC is shown to be so lacking in seasonal flexibility that it, it's like they have that. It, 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 they're so intent on they, – they, they've shown so little flexibility in the spring business. I don't have faith that they're going to show a lot of flexibility along the way. I, I'm for guys – I'm the exact opposite. I'm willing for a guy to take off his shoulder pads, put his 
his uh, baseball cleats on and go and play a night game after you play a day game. Uh, I know there's, you know, some people will disagree with that, but I, you know, that used to happen a long time ago, but uh, the CIC is so uh, remiss in like mixing anything together. And, 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 and this is, this is a new world out there. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I think that for them to not uh, like, uh, you know, change on the, or be more flexible with their scheduling. I think that they're afraid of if they do it this year, then when things hopefully eventually go back to somewhat of a normal, you know, world that we've been living in, how do they put it back? How do they go and say, you can play football and baseball this spring since they will cross over, but next year when everything's back, you can't play football and soccer or something like, you know what I mean? Like I, I remember my town high school, you know, 12, 15 years ago, there was a kid who, who went to high school with my sister and he was one of the best soccer players and he kicked for the football team. That would never yeah, happen in this state. You, you look back to the real, the real old timers, Pete, guys, you wonder how they got 16 letters in high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, that's fair. Well, obviously, they as, played someone, more, as yeah. someone who only had two letters in high school. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I just, I think they're afraid that, you know, once the toothpaste is out of the tube, how do you put it back? Because if think they're, they're going to do yeah. it this year, then coaches are going to say, well, we did it last year. Why can't we do it right. again this year? And then that's I, I think, uh, unfortunately, I think the spring guys are just going to have to get the short end of the stick again. I think that's one of the things they're trying to avoid. It's not having spring yeah. again. I, but, you know, I don't have a problem with, like, maybe even pushing it a little bit further up to, up into July, the spring season. Well, I we mean, spoke, why not we, do it? We're in, we're in odd times. I forgot who we spoke to about that. And they were basically like, yeah, schools aren't going to want to continue their budget into July. Right, budget and liability. I heard too. Once the school closed, I don't. I, I'm not. I won't be pretend to be uh, well well enough versed in that. But that, that. But I'll tell you what. That all. I just. I'm just looking at that at calendar like April, like April fifteenth to twenty second or somewhere around there. You know, if they reserve that for baseball. <laughs> watch the whole week get uh, uh, washed out. I'm telling you, you go to spring. Every day is precious, and that's why you can't like like just shrug your shoulders and say we'll leave April fifteenth open for baseball when you know and I know that's a fifty fifty date on whether they play or not. And so uh, yeah. I, you just you just you got to be brave and you got to be willing to adjust. And uh, they've got to prove themselves in in that sort of flexibility right now because they CIC really has it. Well, uh, the I, one thing, I, I can I just bring up I one more that, thing while it's on yeah. my mind? Because I, I, sure. I just – the yeah. nuclear option, in not yeah. literally, figuratively. Because it's driving me crazy that 12-year-old Johnny can play uh, uh, lacrosse and football and his big brother, Pete, who's 16, can't play because he's in high school, ice hockey. That will be hilarious if they don't play and the kid will just say, okay, I'm going to go to the same rink at the same time and play for a, in a league game, you know? Right. Uh, but the nuclear option, quote unquote, not literally, uh, is that school districts would say the heck with it. I'm going to go on my own. There's, n there's no real great indication of that, but, but parochial schools, private schools could do it. Some, some uh, rich school districts that think they could, you know, find a way around the liability insurance questions could do it or well, someone could, you know what I mean? And, and then, cause that's, that's what those uh, independent youth departments are doing. The DPA is not recommended that they play. It's recommended they don't play. And they're saying, okay, we're on our, we're, we're fine. We're good. The parents are good. Right. And they well, don't do it. It's interesting. You mentioned the parochial schools and, and, and the private schools, even on Long Island uh, where I'm from, when Nassau County was like, we're not having sports. Chaminade, who is a Catholic high school on Long Island in Nassau County, was still could play sports because they were in the Catholic high school league, which is a completely separate athletic association um, on Long Island. And then when Suffolk called their sports, um, the Suffolk County private schools were still in play until the state came in. But if that's something that you know, unless the state's going to come in and say, you know, the governor's going to come in and do a sweeping declaration that there's no sports. If the Catholic schools wanted to form their own league, it's not like it would be the first time. And there, there are other blue blueprints around the country of leagues doing that, of, of Catholic schools going out on their own and 
doing what they want because they don't have to follow the CIAC if they didn't want to, if they created their own league. Yeah. Um, we got about like six minutes here. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of issues on that. And I mean, I, I, I that's been one of the CIAC's main points is that they're afraid that uh, kids will just go off and do anything on their own. They want to provide that structure for them to uh to to have something i mean that's been their thing all along just looking at this whole thing who is right though like who is right do we even can we even say who's right i mean i think everyone really wants to be on the right side of this and not have to deal with the backlash which is enormous it's been like they're getting threats you have the you have the cic when they first canceled uh the spring uh sorry the winners championships that they got a lot of uh, a lot of backlash from that Glenn Lundgren has said that that the football one has been exponentially worse. And then on the other side, you have threats to the DPH. The DPH is trying to do the best thing for – this is a big problem I've had with a lot of criticism. Oh, we'll sign a waiver. I want to play. I can play. No, no. It's not about that, everyone. This has been a big point with me. It's about the community spread. They don't want to spread it to – your families and then the families beyond that and the family, they don't want it to go that way. That has been their thing all along. But, you know, then I see that the, the governor's office seems to be punting this back to the CIAC. Uh, but I saw uh, Max Rice, the uh, governor's um, spokesman on WTNH on Sunday saying, well, the CIAC can play. Well, you know what, Max, they can't because the DPH says they can't. And they're kind of under that thumb there. And then people are looking at the DPH saying the DPH is being too draconian. Who's winning in this? It doesn't look like anyone wants to, people, wants to be the bad guy here. I will tell you the people who are winning or the people who will win are the people who are on the side of not wanting to spread this. Those are the people who are going to win. Because at the end of the day, this is what it's about. It's not about football. It's not about soccer. It's not about volleyball. It's not about swimming. It's about preventing this pandemic once in a generation virus from spreading and potentially getting more people sick and pre- and hoping to prevent more people from dying. Those are the people who win. I don't think, I think that's pretty cut and dry. Like if people don't get sick, people don't die. You win. Right. That's it. I'm sorry. And it sucks. To say, I'm a high school sports reporter. I've been a high school sports reporter in this state for over eight years. I love high school sports. I wanted to be on the sideline this weekend. But I would much rather not be on the sideline than potentially have to write stories about kids getting sick. And at worst, and we know what it is, I'm not even going to say it. I would rather be sitting at home watching the same freaking show on Netflix <laughs> than having to write a story about a team that's getting sick or a spike, in a, a spike in a town or a spike across the school and then the potential worst possible ca- uh, case scenario. I would much rather be sitting at home wearing the same sweatpants. That's yeah. who's winning. That's who's on the winning side. What do you think? Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, Pete's right. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm uh, of the notion that uh, – that you really probably could play this football season with here if you kept it in small pods, it might not be disastrous, you know. And uh, you kept them in their in their little regions of, of the state, and you took every safety precaution. But you know what? It could be disastrous. So that's in the de- at the end of the day, I'm still in the no, don't play. But I was like I said, uh, it, what matters is. What matters is what the DPH recommends and the superintendents do it. That's all that matters now. Now, is there a? No, I've seen no magic elixir. Have you? Unless they're all lying to us, we've. I've, none of us have given any on the record or off the record or background information that's saying, yeah, we're going to spring this at the last moment. And if they do, if they come out in the next week and the DPH says, you know what? spreading the kids out from sideline to sidelines and having their own station with hand things and using a uh, shield and uh, and no huddles and maybe no punts and maybe no kickoffs. And if the coaches wear masks, yeah, that's the answer. Knock me over with a feather. Of course we've been knocked over by the feather a lot of other times. So you ask me who the winner is, sanity with a real end answer is the winner because – I think we can agree the hand overall handling of this and the politics and, and, and the, the, the uncertainties have made a lot of people losers. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's been a big, it's been a big issue. The, the politics have kind of gone way off the board. I've seen just so many people just throwing different stats at me. You know, they've thrown pundits at me who are, you know, from the, from one side of the other. I got, you know, uh, Clay Travis sitting there saying that, that the virus is going to go away, even though, you know, it, it, and it's just, football and I got scoop. people throwing football that. Scoop. I got football scoop telling me that it's track. been played with, with no track. with no evidence other than looking at a chart that the whole thing's been – listen, I'm all for – I think we can probably play, and then if it gets a little out of hand, you say, the guys, we gave it a shot. I really think we could have done that. But, you know, I totally get the idea that if we don't play at all, uh, then, uh, then we're not spreading it nearly as much. Now, you could argue about the other sports too. I mean, why do we – why are we if, – if it's okay for football, why is it okay with soccer? That I, no. I, 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 I Mitch you. Ross of, of uh, Fairfield Ludlow, who is a Tufts Medical School graduate and a dermatologist, when we had a, a uh, had like a round table the other day at, at Westport uh, Library, he was saying he felt that football was safer than soccer. And he was talking about like, and I'm, I looked at him and go, really? I, how so? They, there's, you know, 100 snaps per game at least and, 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 there's great contact. He had things like, well, there's only so many seconds and there's shields and pads and helmets where it's actually skin on skin on soccer. Now, you know, my eye tells me a little differently, but, you know, I, I'm not in position to medically say that's right or not because you could go to a cross-country mat, r- race where, I, uh, where the worst I was ever injured was running into a thorn bush. And who, who knows if we're coming down the finish line and I, and I brush up against another sweating kid from another school, one of them's positive COVID, who knows what could happen. So, I mean, there's no, there's no foolproof, uh, there's no foolproof uh, part about this. I get the frustration with seeing other kids playing uh, other sports. I, I get that. And I understand. I think a thing people miss is that this is also, this is public school. I mean, there's a lot more control involved in, in deciding whether we can oh, reopen schools safely. I mean, the, I know the governor kind of lamented the fact that well, I wish p- people were more concerned about reopening schools than they were about football. Well, I mean, that's the, you know, that's the age old thing. Oh, why we all care? Well, we all get passionate about sports, but we don't do about, uh, you know, stuff that are less interesting, is it? But it is an important thing. I mean, a lot of people have talked about the uh, the uh, mental aspects of it. We talked to uh, Western Connecticut State University's uh, doctor, Shane Murphy, who was on the Olympic Committee. We have a, an interview with him coming up. Um, and, and he said it's very, those are very big issues. I mean, obviously, uh, the well health and mental well health, the mental health and the physical well being of uh, kids are, are, are really important. But uh, I get the frustration. I get the mixed messaging. I think there are a lot of nuances that people don't understand, but I also don't think everyone's done a really great job here conveying it. Like I just mentioned about the governor's office, you, you know, you're punting this back onto the CIAC. Like just say we're back in our department of health. And if it says don't go, then you guys shouldn't go. I mean, I don't, I don't think that the governor should be, you know, getting wishy-washy on us as far as, uh, you know, having his, his saying that this is all on the, on the CIAC. What do you think they're going to do? You know, Mr. Governor, I, I, the, the politics of it have just has really been distasteful. But there's also people on the other side, like I, we've mentioned, with just a lot of they're trying to convey their, you know, their opinion is is right no matter what, and then they, they throw all these like misinf- the misinformation thing out there has been ridiculous. Well, they gonna, people people are just grasping on to anything that makes the backs there. They're desperate. Point. I get it. Everyone's desperate, and they want to they want things to be back to normal. I get it. I just, you know, sharing like the football scoop thing, that headline was awful saying that there were zero, zero zero issues. issues. Yeah. Which is not the case. And then in the story, it doesn't back it up with any information. Yeah. It just says, look at these numbers. We haven't heard. Well, there have been states that have been caught burying information and not, not, uh, not uh, releasing numbers. Iowa, Iowa was one. Florida, one. I know the Washington Post had a story on Florida not accurately reporting uh, its cases among uh, school children. We're we're better off than many of those states that for for sure. So I think that's kind of like you got to you know take a look at it from that angle. But the other angle is those those schools are playing now. Again, we we talked to uh, Dr. Vermud and. Uh, he was great. And he, and he was great. He was tremendous. He was all for, listen, we want to stop this thing in its tracks until we get a vaccine. We don't want anybody to get it because if any one person gets it then and they die, then that's on us. And we're the Department of Health. 
or they are the Department of Health, and that is their job is public health. So they're taking a very strong stance on it, which I get, you know, so that is where you have to, re when you're looking at this issue, you really have to look at that side of it. You and have to understand it. it. Yeah. And, and they, nobody seems to want to understand that. No, they don't. I think people are tired of, you know, after the they're lockdown and not being able, they're tired of it, but you know what? Tough cookies. I don't even know if that's the same. But you got to get over it because you can't just have it end. You can't, well, you know what? I put my five months in of yeah, being right. in lockdown and being a good citizen. So I'm over it now. Well, you know what? That's not how this works. Yeah. Like, I'm the other sorry. Thing, the other thing the doctor talked about was like, there are people who have a lot more problems right now. You know, people who are business owners. I've yeah. heard that. I've heard that. People are hurting. You know, I have friends in who are, who are restaurateurs or they own restaurants and they're op operating at 50, 40, 30 percent of regular capacity. And that hurts their bottom line. They can't pay their mortgages. They can't pay. So the doc, so Dr. Vermont's, uh, his, his uh, opinion on it was we want to help those guys out first. That's really important to them. Meanwhile, we can do things we can for kids. And we all, we, everyone understands that the kids, uh, their mental health and their well-being is important but it, it can't, football itself cannot supersede the real problems that the state is dealing with. Now, again, this all comes down to everybody's threshold, where their threshold is. You know, I've heard other guys say like, well, it's never gonna go away. We'll just wait for a vaccine. We just gotta keep living our lives. And that's great. If you don't get it, if, or if your family doesn't get it, that's great for you. But for the people who are impacted by this, it's, it's, it's not the way to, to do this. Yeah, I know well, we're great I mean, here, even... but. Even Dr. Murphy said, I, I asked him, and you should listen to the full interview because it was awesome, but I asked him straight up, I was like, mental health is really important. I, you know, he agrees with that. I've, you know, I, you know, I agree with that. I, I think a lot of us do. But he even said, it's like, public health right now should come first. Yeah. And that's it. I, I don't, I see, for me, it's so frustrating because I don't even think it's a point of debate. Right. Like, it, it should be public health right now. And we should work towards being better. And our numbers are low, so let's keep them low. You want to still be able to, to go to your local breweries if you're of age and, and sit outside and go to your local restaurants and sit outside and, and go to places. Then we have to keep these numbers low. But if we play, if we do other things, which would include high school sports, and let's say as someone who lives in Hamden, if there was a spike in Hamden because of something that happened at the school because of sports or even the school, well, everything in Hamden is going to shut down again. Yeah. We've seen a lot of that with other states. You know, yeah. other states are, we've seen uh, Israel shutting down and things like that. But go ahead, Jake. I was just going to say that uh, if you're looking for a cure for people to stop getting over revved about football, you're going to have a cure for COVID first. Uh, pers the, the American society is not necessarily long on perspective. And because uh, I was, I would point to right now, there are 26,000 kids who are going to get to play sports this fall. And if, it'll be 31 if girls volleyball gets to play. That means that 8,500 or so football players are not. But if we took 85 from, uh, say, if we took soccer and, you know, girls swimming out, which would equal the same number, we wouldn't be having the uproar that we do. Yeah. Uh, There's that's been how much football means to people. You know what? And I'm not going to make fun of them. I am no. not. I grant, because you know what? Deep down, most of them know that this, their kids' education is more important. Some do not. Some are whacked out. But they really feel that it, that, uh, that it, it could be played. But like you guys have so successfully argued here, in my mind, that the general public good to 3 million people uh, as a whole is what matters most. And, and right. don't, and I don't want people to take this as, <clears throat> as like, we don't want sports to be played. Like, you know, we, and it's just the few people on Twitter. They, they love going after you, Jeff, you know, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff hates high school sports. Well, I, I, I can tell you straight up that Jeff doesn't hate high school sports. He loves high school sports, and he loves going to high school sport events. But a Jeff lot of wants to write for game time for the rest of his life. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. That's on the record now. But, <laughs> but like, this is what we do for a living. These are our jobs. These are our careers. You know, I, I've only been doing it for, for eight years, but we have a lot of guys in our company who have been doing this for their whole lives. Why would we want high school sports to be canceled? Why you know, would we not want to do what we want to do? 
We love telling stories of high school athletes. We love going to games. We love doing the videos and the pickums and the podcasts. And, and we truly love doing that every single day. And even if it's working six or during football season, it's seven days a week that we're working, putting this together, doing previews, doing the pickums, doing the podcast. And then on Saturday, going to games. And then Saturday night, looking at all the results and putting together the top players and, and, and all that stuff. We love doing all of that. So please don't tell us that we don't want sports yeah. to be played and we're rooting for sports to not be played because that's, oh, that's erroneous. And that yeah. is a word that I never use. I, I use this. I'm so mad. I made this point before. <laughs> I'll, I'll repeat it. Uh, my own kid who played high school basketball, he brought it up to me. He's saying like, you know, as a sports columnist, I'm trying to use the part of my brain that it's not lacking in passion in but dispassion in the sense that you're trying to look at the whole picture and best understand it as fair and in getting it right. Now, as a parent, he kids me, I'd be doing, I'd be making a zillion phone calls. How do we play this game? How do we do this? How do we get it? So I understand the bias. You know what I mean? I think, and so I understand where the parents are coming from. I really do because it, it would be, if my son was a star quarterback this fall, and I would be right. I'd be writing with one side of my brain, and the other side of my brain would be screaming at, screaming it at me to say, "Yeah, figure out a way to play those games." I understand that, and and you know, and I have a degree of compassion for, it, but it can't be the greatest compassion. The greatest compassion has to be for the greater, the greatest whole in our right. state. And that's what the doctor, uh, Doctor Vermut, says in in his arguing with him. He's he kind of laments that he goes sometimes you know it's time to stop thinking about yourself. This is an extraordinary circumstance, and yeah, it stinks for you. It really does, and it is. You just got dealt, dealt a bad hand here. We even the, the the Dr. Murphy. We even talked to you a little about that. It's now. What do you do? You know, what do you do now? How do you 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 scream from the mountaintops? You you petition whoever you need to petition. You, you march from the, the state capitol. Yeah. Yeah, you march on the state capitol. You tell the governor, we've been doing everything we do. You point to the numbers. You say, hey, look at all these guys. Look at John, my brother. He's playing Pop Warner. You look at all the guys who are at Hamden, at Northford, at, at wherever. Uh, they're, they're getting away. They're playing their games. Why can't I play? And that's, you know, they need a concise answer on that. They've been given one. It's not good for them. They don't like it. Um, they've seen other people in school playing. I think, here's what I think at the end of the day, this too shall pass at some point like the doctor Vermont says we're going to have a vaccine at some point this too shall pass we're going to look back it's going to be 10 years from now we're going to be like wow how the heck did we ever survive that well, I, now now we'll, we're going to have 2020 to talk about except instead of uh what was it 2014 with the eight yeah. champions oh yeah no <laughs> listen it, even if we do play let's say we start hey football's on for fall this fall and and we're on tomorrow everything's great we're still – it's not going to be the same season. We're not going to get a state championship. But at the end of the day, the kids will play. And that, that's the most important thing. Yeah. It, it is definitely not a great se- – it wouldn't, be, wouldn't even be a great season for us. We would go out. We would cover the games. I really sincerely hope they do figure out something on the spring. I know there's a lot of logistics involved. We'll be talking to people uh, in future podcasts, um, you know, who, who, who can tell us more, a little bit more about that, how that, that could work. I just hope they make that decision because, you know, I, I think it's foolish for them to just say, well, we're not going to try at all. Uh, when you have Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Maine, New York, they're all looking at spring options. Now, will they pull it off? Who knows? But at least they have the option on the table. If you're not going to be able to go to fall, then let's please. And Jeffy, we brought this up in a column this weekend. Let's please, let's try to go to spring, please. Anyway. No. So, but I, I will just quickly, if they go to spring, I, I will stand up for the spring athletes a little bit slightly. Um, they got, yeah, they got a raw deal. They got they a raw deal the whole in season. the spring and I'm all for football moving to the spring. I just hope they do it in a, in a, in a better, in a way where kids aren't going to have to miss. I, I think we saw the proposal. Uh, we had it on our website from the SEC and the ECC, right. For spring yep. football. And there were some overlapping dates. Yeah. That really stood out to me. And obviously they said at the bottom that conversations will continue to happen. But like, uh, you know, a hard thing would be asking an athlete to pick and choose. And like when you look at certain, you know, teams in the state who are really good at football year in and year out, a lot of them are really good at lacrosse too. Yeah. And oh, I, know. I, you know, I just want to stick up for my spring athletes a little bit. I am a huge baseball guy. 
Um, obviously, lacrosse. Look, if you look at this state, and I know people are more passionate about football than anything else, but we are the, one of the best states in, in lacrosse, in boys and girls lacrosse in the country. Yeah. Right? So if we want to push football, if we're going to talk football, there are going to be a lot of schools. If there are, if there are overlapping dates, we might lose a lot of football players to lacrosse. And I just, uh, just yeah. wonder. It's I baseball, just, too. I mean, listen, there's no easy. I hate to say it. There's no easy There's answer. no easy answer. There's no easy answer. That's Listen, Jeff, uh, Jeff we, Jacobs for a T. There's no easy gone, answers. We have gone way over. There's so much we couldn't even talk about. There's so much we could get to. We're going to try and do this uh, a lot more consistently as we get into the season here, as we get into some of the other high school seasons here. Jeff, thanks for coming on. We'll see about what we can do with uh, the fixing your, your video there. Um, but thanks for coming on. And, uh, you know, you can read his columns at uh, on Game Time CT and the Earth Connecticut Media Group. Um, stick around. We're going to have uh, the interviews with Dr. Shane Murphy from uh, – Western Connecticut State. We're going to have the interview with uh, Brennan Jackson, the director of football at Utah, who says, hey, everything's great there. They're playing. Although, you know, as Jeff's mentioned, BYU, <laughs> it may not be looking as great. And then, of course, we have the Yale Dean of Public, uh, Yale School of Public Health Dean, Dr. Sten Bermud, uh, with Pete and I a little bit. So uh, lots to lots to look at, lots to talk about, lots of opinions. Lots to playing. unpack, as they yeah, say. Yeah, lots to unpack. We'll be back uh, throughout the week, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, hopefully this comes to a a decision, a final this or some sort of decision that's at least acceptable to a majority of people because you're not going to please everybody all the time. So anyway, for Jeff Jacobs and people, I'm Sean Patrick Bowley. We'll see you guys. Love you.